I, uh, I've been studying my own personal study. I like to go from Genesis to Revelations. It's just my pattern. And right now, my own personal study, I'm in Revelations, and I'm fixing when I get through with that, I'll start over in Genesis and take off again. This is aside from everything else that I do. But uh, I, I was reading, and this is in Revelations 1 and 10. This is John talking. And he said, on the Lord's day, which is Sunday, I was in the Spirit. And I was looking at that. Too many Christians today have no idea what it means to be in the Spirit, or to walk in the Spirit, or to worship in the Spirit, or to pray in the Spirit, or to be led by the Spirit. Too many Christians. Would you agree with that? See, with Christ, this being in the Spirit is, was not an exception to him, but it was a continuous, continuous state that he was in. And I think that we should be in that same continuous state. Now, i got to put this out, too, because a lot of times we think, oh, walking in the Spirit, that means we're really righteous and we're really conscientious and we're doing all the right things, you know. <laughs> Self-righteousness is filthy rags. And that's not what we're talking about. I'm hoping that by the end of this teaching, you'll have a better understanding of what it means to be in the Spirit. So I'm going to throw a lot of scriptures at you. This is a teaching this morning for us to have a better understanding. If we understand more of God's Word and more of His ways, it's so much easier to follow after Him. Would you agree with that? So that is the point this morning. So forgive me for all the scriptures that are here, but I think they're going to be beneficial for us to understand what God wants us and the way God wants us to live. All right? So how about this? In the spirit is a state in which the mind is arrested and fixed on spiritual meditation and communication with God's spirit. Do I need to repeat that one? I should have had that one written down. Well, let's go to the scripture instead. Ephesians 3 and 16, and I'm going to use the NIV on this one. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being. In the spirit is a state in which the mind is arrested and fixed on spiritual meditation and communication with God's Spirit. Does that make a little more sense? You see, it's more than meditation. In the Spirit, it means a communication and a communion with God's Spirit. We're getting deep here, right? But it's time for us to get deep, to have a better understanding. You see, John 14, 17 says this, Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. I want to focus on the he will be with you. Is he with you? Now, if he's going to be with you, that means that's something that you want to happen. Because he's a perfect gentleman. He wants to be with you. That's the determination that you and I have to have. And that's what it means be, being in the Spirit. It's more than a feeling. It's a knowing, loving presence that you allow and encourage in your spirit. Romans 8.16 The spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. Is this beginning to open your eyes to some understanding about the relationship you and I can have, can have, with God's Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. A worship.
to be in his spirit. We must be on guard that our prayers and our relationship with God may become only a thought or a word communication. And so much of the time, that's where it's, it's down to. We talk to God. Lord, I'm having a trouble in this area. Would you help me out with this? Nothing wrong with that. You talk. But what about the spirit part. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes the only time we really get serious with God is when we're in deep trouble. And that's when we start looking for His Spirit. We start looking for His comfort. We start looking for His wisdom. Well, shouldn't we be that way all the time? Amen. And I'm not talking about being a religious freak. No, not at all. But to be aware of his presence in everything that we do. I mean, I work. Well, used to. You know, we preachers, we don't work. You know, we just kind of, you know, that's not true. But I deal with bills. I deal with people. I deal, I mean, especially now uh, that uh, uh, the um, political thing uh, I found myself involved with. I said, I can't get away from it. I keep trying to. You know what I'm saying? But the Lord says, not yet. And I says, okay. But you know, how do I know he's saying not yet? Because I'm walking in the Spirit. Right? You see what I'm saying? Not everything that I come up with or, 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 or what God gives me is a spiritual truth. But yet it's still wisdom that comes. I don't know if I'm making myself clear, but some people are so uh, spiritual minded that they're no earthly good. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to be that way. I want to be a vessel and I want to be walking in the Spirit so I can hear what the Spirit says and do it God's way and not mine. And that's so difficult because all of us have a will. All of us seem to think that Whatever happens, it's got to be done in my approval, or we ain't doing it. Well, wait a minute. The Bible, doesn't it say, don't lean to your own understanding? Trust Him. And how do you trust Him? By walking and living in His Spirit. And all I'm saying is, have a presence. Have His presence in you in all that you do, in all that you say. Matthew, um, Matthew 15 and 8. This people draw nigh with me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Lord, I don't want to do that. I, I, I want my heart to be with you. I want your spirit to be in my heart so I can listen to you. I, I, I want my decisions not, and, 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 and I thank you that you let me hear and, and, and reason things out on my own, but you also have your spirit that's there to lead me and guide me in your ways. I have the decision to make. So do you. And it's so difficult at times to do it his way when our way seems much more reasonable, right? I'm being honest with you. Pastor, you struggle with this. I'm just as human as you are. But I want to encourage you that God's way is so much better. And the more that you follow after his ways, the more you see that his way was correct. And that increases faith. And faith, as we talked about, works with patience. Right? And when you have faith and patience, then you have peace of mind. Right? You follow after that peace. It's amazing how God's word works. 
So this morning's sermon is to encourage us to walk in his spirit. Not only be in his spirit, but to walk in his spirit. We should strive to make the Holy Spirit our best friend. Now maybe that's a different way of looking at it. But if I wanted you to be my best friend, I'd spend a lot of time with you. I'd listen to the way you think. Right? I'd listen to the, what you say to me. Isn't that how we make him our best friend? You just sure don't ignore them. If you ignore a person, they're not going to be your best friend. Right? And, and, and here's the other thing. The Holy Spirit wants to be your best friend. That's God's spirit. That's the spirit of Christ. That's the spirit of Almighty. You are my friends if you do what I tell you to do. Why do I do what he tells me to do? Because when he tells me to do something, it's for my benefit. My benefit. Why? Because he loves me. And he wants to be able to lead me and guide me and to think the way he thinks so I can take on whatever evil's in front of me and stand on my own two feet with his presence and his guidance and smack the devil right between the teeth and the eyes or whatever. Right? Right? And win. To be an overcomer. All right? Galatians. I'm going to use Amplified on this one. This is 525. If we live by Holy Spirit, let us also walk by the Spirit. If by the Holy Spirit we have our life in God, let us go forward walking in line our conduct controlled by our spirit? No, by his. That is something we purposely do. How do you do that 24-7? You work on it. You work on it. You work on it. You make that a priority. Is this making sense? I'm hoping it opens our eyes. Now, I'm not talking about heaven or hell, being saved or not being saved. I'm talking about an abundant life. Amen. I want to be someone who can make a difference yeah. through God, and God can use me to make a difference in other people's life. I think I know how to do it, but he knows how to do it. Yeah. Really? Yes. If that's the case, then I want to be in the Spirit. To walk in the Spirit. Our walk with the Spirit is not a self-righteous walk led by what we think. And what we think we should be doing. But it should be a walk that is guided by the Spirit. And this can only be accomplished if we constantly live in the Spirit. Oh. Romans 8 and 14 says this, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Whoa. Are you a son of God? Then we need to prove it. Why? By being led by His Spirit. That means that every time I find myself making a decision... Well, Holy Spirit, what do you think? Yes. You know, you see what I'm saying? Uh, God, what's your, what's your take on this? So much of the time, we don't even think about God. We just make a decision and go with it. And God's been trying to get our attention all this time. Amen. I, I, I want to be where I'm listening to him. And again, I'm not talking about being self-righteous. Not at all. I just want to do it God's way. I mean, Christ came to the earth and faced everything that we faced. He lived and walked on this planet. And he gave us a way to live. Do as I do. Be ye holy, for I am holy. Right? Well, I used to think when, especially as a teenager, I didn't want to be a Christian because... There was a kid that, uh, and, and, and no, I won't even say his name because he may still be alive. This kid, 
He carried a Bible everywhere he went. He always was in a suit and a tie. You know, he couldn't go to gym because shorts. And, and God says, I want you to follow after me. And I said, uh-uh, I, I see. Him. I, I can't live that way. <laughs> no, that, no. And then the Lord came to me and said, I didn't call you to do that. I called him, but not you. He said, Jerry, you do what I tell you to do. Yes. And there's a freedom in that. Because he didn't make me that way. So is he right or wrong, this other guy? I don't know. It's not my call. My call is this. The Lord, whatever you want me to do, yes. lead me and guide me in your ways. No preconceived idea or some preacher standing up there beating me over the head right and wrong. Lord, you're the one that counts. It's whether or not I make you proud of me. I don't care what other people think of me. I care about what you think. I don't care about their opinion or my opinion. I care about yours. And the only way I know to find his opinion is to walk in his ways, to have fellowship with him, to be conscious of his spirit, and ask him constantly, well, what's your take on this? Is this making sense? Amen. If you're led by the Spirit, you don't have to worry about doing something wrong. How about that one? Is there a scripture on that? Yes. Galatians 5, 18. For if we be led of the Spirit, we are not under the law. That's freedom. <laughs> right? Now, there's a deep, deeper teaching on that. If you want to get into that, be with us on, on, on uh, Wednesday nights. Right now, we're, we're dealing with that, and we're in Romans, and, and that's a good teaching. Don't have time to get into it now. Now, I want you to know this, that Jesus always followed the Spirit. You'll find this in Mark 1 and, and 12. And immediately, the Spirit driveth him into the wilderness. He was listening to the Spirit. And the Spirit says, you go! Sometimes he does. He, he, he gets direct with you, right? You need to do this, Jerry. Okay. Doesn't make sense to me, but I'll do it, right? Sometimes, all right? Now, not only was Christ... Oh, okay. Uh, that's, uh, that's in Mark 1 and 12, and immediately the Spirit drived him into the wilderness, right? Now, Paul was led by the Spirit... And his, in his travels throughout uh, Galatia, and, and there's some words here I'm having a hard time pronouncing, so forgive me. I'm just not really like, like, linguistic that way, obviously, because I couldn't even say that word right. So uh, those of you who, who, who think you can't do something because you can't do something, and don't let that get in the way of doing something. Amen. Okay? Try it anyway. Most people will understand what you're talking about. This is in Acts 16, uh, 6 through 7. Now, when they had gone throughout... Hello. Anyone to help me with that? You linguists, huh? There you go. All right. And the region of Galatia. And were forbidden of the Holy Ghost to preach the word in Asia. The Holy Spirit. How did they know? Because they were walking in the Spirit. And the Spirit said, don't do it. Don't go there. They were wanting to go there. That was their plan. Right? And, and it made sense them to go there because they needed churches there. Right? But the Holy Spirit, no, not good. I want you to go someplace else. And, and it didn't stop there. And after they were coming to Masia, they essayed to go into this other town. But the Spirit suffered them not. They don't even go there. Now, how many have experienced that? Really? And if you haven't, that is something that we need to work on so that we can hear God's Spirit. I guarantee you, before they went that direction, He was talking with the Spirit, the Holy Spirit. 
What's your thought? This is our plans. You know, the scripture even says, don't make plans for tomorrow because you don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. Say, if it's the Lord's will, we're going to do this. We're going to do such and such. I didn't put that scripture up there, but you guys know what I'm talking about, right? Lord, lead me and guide me in your ways. How do you do that? You're in his spirit. All right? Now, how about this one? The battle we face is an, is Choosing the path that is correct. How many know about that battle? How many are facing that battle even right now? It looks like the majority of you. Some of you are raising your hands. Some of you, I think, may have fallen asleep. I hope not. You know? But, but, but listen to what's being said, because these are words of truth. Why are we going through so much trouble? Why is it look like things aren't just going right? Well, there's two reasons. You've got a devil that hates your guts. And he's going to challenge you and, and test you. But the other one might be because we're trying to do things our way. I hate that song. I did it my way. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. I did it God's way. Why? Because I was listening to him. I didn't agree with him. But the Bible says don't lean to your own understanding. Trust him in all your ways. Right? And he will lead you and guide your steps. Right? Some of you are getting kind of antsy. Well, that's not my fault. That's the Holy Spirit talking to you. Listen to him. Because that's the problem we have. We don't want to listen to him because I don't want to do this. I'm going to do it my way. Your choice. You can do what you want to do. But God's got his hand out there and says, listen, trust me. Give me a chance to make a difference in your life. Because doing it your way, where, where has that got you so far? So, many, so much of the time, we face depression, we face problems, we face heartaches, we face all this stuff that God says, man, if you just listen to me, if you just listen to me, trust me. Amen. Give me a chance to make a difference in your life. Because I'm not going to force my way on you. Because I love you. You are free. Amen. 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 Freedom is making a choice. Now, choices have consequences. I mean, that's a duh. You get in your car and go down Main Street at 120 miles an hour, there's going to be a consequence. Usually it's with red lights and a vehicle following you, if not killing somebody. You understand what I'm saying? All right, enough said on that. The battle we face is choosing the right path. This is uh, Proverbs 16 and 9. A man's heart devises his way, but the Lord directs his steps. In other words, I ain't got it figured out how I want to do this, but I want the Lord to direct my steps. And the only way that he can direct my steps is to me me being in the Spirit, me having fellowship with the Spirit, me being aware of His Spirit of being around me, me on purpose saying, I want you to be my best friend. I want to spend time with you. Right? Does that mean I'm praying 24-7? Who can do that? You can't. But you can walk in His presence 24-7. Right? I'm getting some amens here. It's really quiet. All right. Now, you, you do realize that uh, we're not talking religion here. We're talking about a relationship with a God that really exists. Amen. We need to recognize that. Yes. Right? Because our lives, a lot of times, our lives don't say he exists. He's just a crutch. Right? Uh, well, yeah, well, I, I need a crutch. Right? But the truth is... I'm listening to him because uh, let's just stay on, on yeah, let's stay on yeah on, on course. And some of you got don't go down that rabbit hole because there's potatoes in there we want to eat later on, and my stomach's getting hungry. Right? Yeah, me too. Me too. All right. Love spuds. Okay. Uh, where are we at? Worship in the Spirit. 
Okay, this is another aspect. This is John 4, 23 through 24. But the hour cometh, and now is, notice, now is, when the true worshiper shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Wow. It is a worship from the heart yes. and not from the head. When we worship Him this morning, I want to encourage you. Don't just stand and read the words and say the words. Let them become a part of your heart. And look and say, Lord, I want those words to be a part of my emotions, part of my spirit. I want to worship you from my heart and not from my head. And you'll find that when you worship him, because he seeks people to worship him, they seek that kind of worship, he seeks that, then he inhabits it. Does that make sense? You want to feel God's presence? Worship him from your heart. When you sing, when you praise, when you talk, talk to them from here, right? Does that make sense? So many times people get into the, the prayer, you know, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And out the door they walk. Wait a minute. That's from here. My Father, my Father, God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, the one that loves me, the creator of the universe. Holy, holy is your name, so full of righteousness. You see, that's a prayer from the heart. That's the worship that God wants. Does that make sense? To worship the Spirit is more of a heartfelt communication than of a mind thought prayer. All right? Matthew 22, 24, I mean 37. Jesus said to them, Thou shalt love the Lord with uh, the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, with all I got. To worship, the, to worship in the Spirit is more than a heartfelt communication. It is more than a mind-thought prayer. Philippians 3.3 3 amplifies this. For, uh, for we Christians are the true circumcision who worship God in spirit and by the spirit of God. Whoa! Is this beginning to open your eyes a little bit, what it means to be in the spirit? It's entirely different than, well, let me just keep going. I believe that worship in the spirit is more emotional than mechanical or something we do out of habit. Would you agree with that? Now, I mean, that may be a new thought to us, but be it so, it's still true. David put it this way in Psalms 86 and 12. I will praise you, O Lord, my God, with all my heart. I will glorify your name forever. What I'm doing right now is just not what I'm going to do now. But a million years from now, I'm going to still be doing the same thing. And if you're going to be doing it a million years from now, shouldn't we be practicing it now? There you go. All right. He also said this. This is in Psalm 63 and 4. I will praise you as long as I live. And in your name, I will lift up my hands. Now, I want to make this statement. 
as a youth pastor, I see a lot, I saw a lot of kids that really were struggling. But sometimes the Spirit would move in such a way where we'd be someplace that I would see these kids all of a sudden just raise their hands and started crying and praising God. And I would rejoice because it, it showed me they get it. They know what it means to worship the Lord from their heart. And shouldn't we do that every time we walk into God's place? Every time the praise team comes up here and starts praising Him? Amen. Shouldn't we? I've made this statement about my youngest son. We were at a, uh, actually it was a youth camp. And that poor praise team, man, they sound terrible. <laughs> they were just bad, you know. And I'm sitting there going, and man, Lord, it's just hard for me to praise you with this. And I looked over, and Dustin's just sitting there with his hands up. And he's got tears in his eyes. And I walked up to him, because Dad can do this, and I said, how can you praise God with that noise? He said, I'm not even listening to him. I'm just singing the words. I'm just singing the words. And I thought, even my own son can teach me. Right? Out of the mouths of babes sometimes. So I want you to realize that a sacrifice of praise, sometimes that's what it is. I don't care what's up here. Fortunately, we have a good praise team. We have some good singers and can lead you that way. Right? But the main thing is, guys, we need to be worshiping him from here. In his presence. When we were, especially when the first scripture I read... I was in the Lord's day, on the Lord's day, in his presence. Right? Shouldn't we be? Is this good? Yes. I should get some more amens here. Instead of, I, I, maybe what I'm getting is, oh my. All right? <laughs> you know, uh, someone said last week, he said, man, Pastor, you just stomped all over your toe, our toes. And I said, you think your toes are smashed? Look at mine. You know, God deals with all of us. And if we just listen to him, what's good for the goose is good for the gander, right? All right. Praying in the Spirit. Where am I at? Psalm 63 and 4. This is Jude 1 and 20. But ye, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith... Praying in the Holy Ghost. That's more than right here. That's praying Amen. in His Spirit. Lord, lead me. Lord, I want to be in Your Spirit. I want to hear what You've got to say. Faith grows when we learn to trust in the Holy Spirit instead of our reasoning. One of my sons used to journal and I liked how he journaled. He would read God's word. You've heard me say this in the past, but this is so good. He would read God's word, then he would write down in his journal what he read, then he'd put the pen down and grab a red ink pen and listen, and then write down what God's telling him to do. Now that's reading, that's studying in the spirit. Does that make sense? We should be doing that in everything that we do. Praying in the Spirit. This is Ephesians 6 and 18. And pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. No exception. I want to pray in the Spirit. Lord, I want to get where I can get one-on-one -on -one with you and every prayer I have. Right? This is good, isn't it? This gets us closer to him. Praying always in the spirit could be understood as the outer world being shut out, shut off, getting away from it, so that the inner human spirit can be influenced by God's spirit. Well, where does it teach that? This is in Matthew 6.6. 6. Christ talking. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your Father which is in secret. 
Then your Father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. Matthew 6.6. 6. We need to get one-on-one -on -one with God. Now, whether it's in these altars or at home or whatever, and I've mentioned last week, don't do it in your car. Because if you let go of that steering wheel and start praising God, that's not driving by faith. That's just being stupid. Right? Get one-on-one -on -one with God where there's no distractions. When you can talk to Him, that's in the Spirit. It's really quiet in here. I'm hoping I'm giving you some ideas. Well, Pastor, how, how do I do all this? I don't expect you to. I'm just saying let God guide you and tell you this is what you need to do next. That's walking with Him. He just doesn't throw you with everything. But from the pulpit, I'm going to throw you with everything I got, hoping that something sticks. Amen. All right? Actually, it's God's Spirit that's talking to you. So listen to what he's, what he's saying, all right? This is from Romans 8, 26. In the same way, now let, me, let me say, it is God's Spirit that is communicating or communing. Uh, it is your Spirit communicating or communing with God's Spirit, the Holy Ghost. Communicating or communing. I like those combinations of words. This is again from Romans six, I mean Romans eight and twenty-six. In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit Himself intercedes for us with groans that words cannot express. That's Praying in the Spirit. Well, I thought that was praying with tongues and everything. And don't get that mixed up, guys. We're talking about following God's Spirit, which is to everybody. Everybody. Tongues, this is entirely different. Baptism, no, entirely different. We're not even going there tonight. We're talking about basics for every one of us Christian. Holiness, Baptist, uh, Catholic, whatever. If you're following God, God's Spirit says you do it following Him. Make Him your best friend. All right? It can be seen as a state of mind in which a person's spirit is moved by God's Spirit so that an intimate connection with the spiritual world can be established. And that's what we're wanting to do. Amen. Really get quiet on that one. Maybe I should be writing these down. Where, where'd you get this? Same place that you can. I'm just praying and the Lord's just giving it to me. And I'm going, that's good stuff, God. And I'm, you know, if, and if God can use me this way, he can use you. I'm no more holy than you are. I put my britches on the same way you do. I use soap in the shower. Hopefully you do too. You see what I'm saying? I, I, I like what the Bible says. Elijah was a man just like us. Had the same compassions, the same everything. And yet God used him because he made up his mind to follow after God's spirit. That's all I'm saying is, guys, that's the secret. Make up your mind and follow after him. Make him your best friend. Let him be part of your surrounding. All right? It can be seen as a state of mind in which a person's spirit is moved by God's spirit so that an intimate connection with the spiritual world is established. 1 Corinthians 14 and 15 says this, What is it then? I will pray with the spirit, and I will pray with understanding also. I will sing with the spirit, and I will sing with understanding also. I do both ways. Right? Okay. Let's go with this one. Being led by the Spirit. This is in Romans 8 and 14. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Oh, how many want to be a son of God? How many are the sons of God? How many realize you are a son of God? But if you're the son of God, you need to be led by the Spirit, not by your own way of thinking. 
All right? This involves surrendering our reasoning and being aware of the Spirit's guidance and His presence. Okay? Romans 8 and 1. There is therefore no, now no condemnation to them which are in Jesus Christ who walk not after the flesh, which is here, but after the Spirit. It's different. You guys do realize that, right? All right. If you are in the Spirit, you will find incredible truths, wisdom, and understanding of the future as part of your life. That's promised to all Christians. How be it when he, this is in John 16, 13. How be it when he, the spirit, is true, uh, the spirit of truth, has come. He will guide you into all truth. Who's you? You! Not the pastor. He said, you. He will guide you in all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that he shall speak. And he will show, it, uh, show you things to come. Really? Well, how come that's not happening? I would venture to say because we haven't learned to walk in the Spirit. To have the Spirit of God as our best friend. To be in the Spirit all the time. This is something we learn to do and we keep practicing it. Keep practicing it, right? Are you there yet, Pastor? I'm working on it. How many can say you're working on it? Right. I'm not perfect. But I do know this. The more that I spend time with Him, the more fascinating this life is. Amen. It is incredible, right? Okay. 1 Corinthians 2 and 10. But God has revealed it to us by His Spirit. The Spirit searches all things, even the deep things of God. You want to learn the deep things of God? Where do you think I get it? And I'm no different than you. God's not a respecter of person. Or you're the pastor. Yeah, that's my office. What's your office? Some of your office is praise team. Some of your office is being a family person. Some of your office is being a dental assistant. Sorry, Wanda. Just had to throw that out there. You see what I'm saying? God puts you in these different positions, right? All right. John 14, 26. The Spirit is our teacher. He is our teacher. But the Comforter, this is John 14, 26. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to remembrance whatsoever I have said to you. Let God's Spirit teach you. Well, you're teaching us this morning. I'm giving you a direction to go. I'm encouraging you, you know, and, and, and that's why I always say, uh, you know, question everything, including your pastor. Right? But let God's Spirit teach you. 1 John 2 and 27. But you have received the Holy Spirit, and He lives within you. So you don't need anyone to teach you what is true. For the Spirit teaches you everything you need to know. Amen. And what He teaches is true. He is not a lie. It is not a lie. So just as He has taught you, remain in fellowship with Christ. Really? Well, let me give you a true way of understanding what that means. Have you ever listened to someone that was preaching and all of a sudden in your spirit it says, wait a minute, that ain't right. How many have experienced that? That's the Holy Spirit. He's saying, you need, don't need to listen to what this guy's saying because he's not saying what I'm teaching. You see what I'm saying? 
So I can listen to what other people are teaching because the Holy Spirit is teaching them to teach you. But you need to try that spirit and make sure it lines up with God's word. Question everything. That's your responsibility is to be able to get close enough to God, have him, his presence around you where you can hear him when he can throw up a red flag. Amen. You see what I'm saying? That's walking in the spirit. That's fellowship with the spirit, right? And, and sometimes you can say, well, wait a minute. Why is this wrong? There's sometimes the Holy Spirit will just tell you, I'll tell you later when you can... Get grasp a little more knowledge, right? Again, as I've used this example in the past, there were times when my kids say, well, why can't I do it? And I'll just say, because I told you, you couldn't. You'll understand later, right? Get it? Especially if you've got teenagers. You see what I'm saying? You've got to trust the Holy Spirit. Run it by Him. Trust what He says. You say be controlled by him. He'll never control you unless you allow it. That's just not God's way. He's going to let you do whatever you want to do. Right? Hopefully you'll learn from it. I have found out that that's the hard way of learning. It's, I mean, spankings, whether it was from God or my dad, one of the two, was not pleasant. Right? But I learned. Right? If he loves you, he's going to spank you. Right? Okay. So let's get down to the last two scriptures. Then we can go eat spuds. What's the whole point? The whole point is this. Galatians 5, 16 through 25. This is Paul talking. This I say, walk in the spirit. Catch it. He's starting with this, these words, walk in the spirit and, you shall, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. What's the lust of the flesh? This thing, your way of thinking, doing it your way, right? Walk in the spirit, listen to his counseling. Get it? All right, he doesn't stop there because he really explains it. For the flesh lusts against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary one to another, so that you cannot do the things that you would. I want to do what God wants me to do, but yet I'm thinking, this is what I want to do. Have you ever been there? He knows exactly what he's talking about. Then 18, he says this. But if ye be led of the Spirit, you're not under the law. The Spirit is not going to tell you to do something wrong. Right? Well, that takes a load off of me. Right? Because I just sometimes I don't know what's right and what's wrong, but if I'm following him, I can't go wrong. What do you mean? Well, if I get in heaven, God says. Why'd you do this? I want to be able to say because you told me to. Will that ever happen? No. But it's nice to know I can say that, right? I mean, that shuts the devil up in a hurry. All right? But if you be led of the Spirit, you're not under the law. So what is the flesh? What is the thinking of our hearts? He explains it. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresy. Have you ever, you know, uh, my thinking goes that way at times. Well, you're a pastor. Well, you're a Christian. Well, you're a son of God. So am I. I'm still fighting this stuff, right? Envyings, murder, drunkenness, reviling, and such like, of which I told you before and I have told you in the past that they do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. That's the thinking we need to get away from, the thinking of the flesh. And the only way to do that is have the Holy Spirit as your best friend and just run up by Him what you're thinking. All right? I can give you examples. I can give you one right now, but I won't because it'll put someone in a bad light. 
But I had someone that was doing what I thought to me and to this church was wrong. And I was going to go tell them about it. Right? Righteous. This is the way this should be done. God's spirit, no. But God, this is, he needs to know. Nope. Yesterday, I saw a change in the guy's heart and saw him do the right thing. God didn't need me. He just needed me to listen to his, because he had a plan and I was fixing to short circuit it. You've got to get where you listen to his spirit and trust him. What happened to my faith? It grew. It grew. Because I could identify all this stuff here that was of my flesh. That was where my thinking was. Revenge. Uh, you know, you, you see what I'm saying? I like how Paul really gets it into the nitty gritty. So we're without excuse. But listen to verse 22. But the spirit... But the fruit of the Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit, the benefit of listening to what Spirit says, the benefit of being in the Spirit, the, the benefit of listening to His counseling. This is what happens when you do that. That's why we call it the fruit. The fruit of the Spirit is what? There you go. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith. Making this temperance against such there is no law. Isn't that what we just read? Following his spirit. Why don't we have these things in our life? Because so much of the time we don't have the Holy Spirit as our best friend. So much of the time we don't realize it, but we ignore him. I don't want to ignore him anymore, do you? Lord, help me. Help me. To walk in your spirit. And they that are in Christ have crucified the flesh and the afflictions and the lust. If we live in the spirit, let us walk in the spirit. Last verse. John 10.10, 10, you know this. But the thief, which is the devil... Cometh not but to steal. He wants to steal from you. He wants to kill you. He wants to destroy you. But I am come. I am come. That they might have life. And that it might have it more abundantly. Amen. Thank you, Lord. What are you going through now? Are you going through some rough times? Welcome to the club. We're in a war, but we're not alone. I don't know what to do, but my best friend does. And I'm going to listen to him. I want to get close to him. And when I'm finding that the devil's trying to rob that life, he's trying to rob the joy, the peace, and every, he's trying to get me away from my best friend and not to trust my best friend, to trust what I think is right. Isn't that what the devil said? He said, I'll have no God above me. I will become as God. Told Eve the same thing. Uh, God is just holding things back from you, you know. He doesn't want you to be as a God. No, wait a minute. That's Satan's way of thinking. I want to be a part of my family. I want to be a part of God's family. I want to be a part of the kingdom of heaven. Because Christ died that I may become a part of that kingdom again. And to serve and follow him. And realize that I'm not alone. You are not alone unless you choose to be. How do you choose to be? By not making the Holy Spirit your best friend because he wants to be. Strive to be, let him be your best friend. Trust him even though it doesn't make sense. And I promise you that the fruit of that is going to be love, joy, peace, even long-suffering. Patience is part of it. We talked about that. Is this good? So I want to encourage you this morning as we come to an end 
and get ready to go eat some good spuds. This is going to be a bad joke. But shouldn't we be a stud in God's kingdom? <laughs> That's not to be confused with a spud, right? I'm sorry. Boy, you just killed the spirit on that one, didn't you? No. If you're on Facebook, I hope this, this gets you closer to God. I want to encourage you. Prove me wrong, you can't. Prove God's word wrong, you can't. I wouldn't even go there. Just trust him. Just trust him. Get close to him. How do I do that? Didn't I just read that he'll lead you and guide you? He will teach you. Trust him. Get close to him. Spend time with him. Talk to him. When you're praising God, do it from here. Do it from your spirit and not from your head. Right? Use your head to explain some things. But sometimes there's some things that you're going through that you don't understand. And that's neat about the Holy Spirit because He will guide you and use your spirit to talk to God in words that you can't even understand. How many have experienced that? That is a relationship with a God that lives and wants, and wants to be a part of our life. He's real. He is so real. Let Him be real in your life. And the first thing you need to do is get close to God. And that's what I'm talking about this morning. Get close to Him. Those are you that are on Facebook. May God bless you. Have a great day.